and Far Eye. I was in Grenada, right? And um, I forgot the Brazier's name, but he brought up something that I never really thought about, to tell you the truth. He was he was speaking about how um, industrialism in countries like America, Canada, and Europe on the European content lead to the shift and weather patterns that affect the Caribbean, right? Yes. And, um, I would like you to speak about how capitalism and industrialism in these countries impact Caribbean countries who are experiencing these extreme hurricanes. And is there anything realistically that can be done to reduce it? Because the way the thing is going now, they're not re- <laughs> they're, they're not toning down what they're no. doing in regards to production. And it seems that the hurricanes are becoming more extreme and in tighter periods. So is there anything realistic that can be done or is there something that you know about that's being done to reduce uh, the impact on Earth and the Caribbean? That's a very ancient discussion, you know. I mean, I did my PhD work over 20 odd years ago. And my PhD work is actually in sustainable development, you know. And so as part of the discourse, we're speaking about things like the polluter pay principle, which means that those who create the pollution should pay for remedying the solutions, you know, for finding the solutions to the problems. And you know, Europe and America, them just talk and talk and talk, but them have no real interest. And remember, you know, it's not even about so much, because them people that grow up in our culture with them being like them selfish self-interest, that's them economic principles. So them only concerned about things that happen to them. But if you look in America and in Europe, some serious devastation taking place in those places. Fires are burned for months upon months upon months in California. Seeing in, in Italy, they have the great state of emergencies because every year about 60 people die from the extreme heat. And while you have extreme heat in one place, you have extreme flood in the next place. Germany is the same thing. Seeing so they are also feeling it in their homes and they're not paying attention. Seeing, but you see, them people have a mindset with people say, once you have money, you can solve every problem, but that is not it. So, I personally not expecting no guy in Rome to try to find solutions to the problems that I and I face within small island developing nation states. So, I'm not broadening the discussion to move beyond the Caribbean, but anyway, you have small island developing nations. We are affected by certain kind of weather patterns, in particular hurricanes. And you have speak to the fact that the emission of pollutants, which lead to global warming, is creating a problem. I want to raise a very important point here, so which is not a part of the general discourse. Because why we might say that is pollution from manufacturing and from oil production that is causing global warming. I'm saying it is contributing, yes, but I'm going to tell you that my own suspicion is that the biggest fuel of global warming is weapons that these people create and fight wars. You just imagine the amount of heat that is generated from bombs that these people drop everywhere. Think about the impact on the ocean currents when these people test all these bombs in the, in the, in the, in the Pacific Ocean. Where did that energy go? You know, and so when you extract oil and the oil is a lubrication between the plates, it means that there's no lubrication. You're dropping these bombs on the earth, exploding under the sea. That energy is traveling through the ocean floor, creating different shifts and changes, which can lead to all these things that we are seeing. But they have no intention. They have intention, I think, of, of addressing these things. So even though we have these things that I'm called the conference of parties, what them call COP, and we have all these sustainable committees and all these meetings. America in particular is one of the countries that don't sign on to these things. And they are the ones who perpetuate the madness the most. Then you look at oh Europe and those places are looking at alternative energies. They are far advanced over the United States. But the United States is also involved in alternative energy, you know. But it's because they link up into this petri where the petrol carry the petrodollar. With the oil, that is where them have for them problem. And I'm not going to give up their money. Because again, without that money, America, let's say, globally. Now, what are our solutions? So we can't have a solution for our next guy. So, for a long time, we tell people, man, housing designs, a natural hazard, don't have to be a natural disaster. What do I mean by that? 
hurricanes have always been occurring. Those are natural hazards. The intensity might have increased, but it's still a natural hazard. Now, if we have good preparation for a natural hazard, which means, let me give you an example. If we have proper drainage system and we maintain those drains, whenever a storm, which is different from a hurricane, because a hurricane is wind and storm is rain. Whenever a storm, there's less pollution because it can naturally flow out. If you have housing designs that are designed to cut wind, so you're more spherical in the shape of the houses, naturally you'll have less damage. If you use different kind of straps, but remember, you know, this hurricane was 185 miles to 245 miles per hour, you know. So, you know, say, the roof, them, the roof design, we have to pay attention to roof design. So, I'm saying, if we use slab roof, because no concrete roof will be blown down, or blown off, because it will blow off concrete. So, it means that Jamaica will start designing more houses with concrete roofs, as against this fancy zinc. You know, because the zinc is really for aesthetics, you know. If it's functional, we're going to use concrete roof. So there are ways of housing design. There are ways of dealing with free natural hazard preparation, like cleaning drains and make sure that those things and put in place rules that those drains are not backed up against. So you have to talk about solid waste management and all those things. So a natural hazard can occur even up to a category five. And the infrastructure will be spared. You can't stop aeration wind from blowing down trees see so we just replant trees but if you talk about infrastructure there's infrastructure design that can deal with the intensity of the natural hazards but listen to me these guys i see a lot of people sending in a lot of aid i mean i talk any people i'm knowing them i talk some government guy sending in some aid and I'm saying to myself, yeah, I like the fact say they must send in aid. You know, because what people love Jamaica. But me, I wonder if the aid they must send in because I look a bit different. Let me tell you what I mean. It's like me here say, our country send in about 400 generators, which is good. You know, because generators are important because people have no light. But at the same time, me I say, all right, could we do some technology transfer? Because I go to Europe and in America and they want a windmill that I see. See? The amount of different ways of, 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 of generating electricity. The amount of solar designs that them could have. So we could actually use the opportunity now to create a lot of alternative energy systems. And that don't take a long time to put up in a bridging. It don't take a long time to put up like all your people are talk. See? Germany full of them technology. England full of them technology. USA full of them technology. But they must send generator. Instead of sending those plants where you can reach up and put up at the same time. Because breeze still are blow. Sun still a shine. See? So the aid that must see coming in good. But I'm saying the aid that is coming in, the outcome can only be suboptimal. The outcome is not going to be the optimal outcome. And so the state itself now have to know all your reason people. So I may attack the government, I may attack PMP and GLP in parliament. Can I say to all the people who are sending aid, say, what you know? You know, they like. These kind of aids. So, for example, if you talk about water, don't send in a, a plain load of water to Jamaica. Jamaica is a land of full of water. It doesn't have a hurricane. How can have springs and rivers are, are broke up? But what you could do now is send in makeshift, not even makeshift. You can send in processing facilities that can treat the water at a parish level and set up those facilities really, really quickly so people can get access. And even after the impasse, those facilities still exist. To support people who would need water after that as well. So I say, Rastafari vibration is always positive. There's always a positive way beside these things. But you see, sometimes them guys in parliament, they so licky licky and beggy beggy. That's as a man give them something, them accept it without even saying to the bridge and saying, No, so what could I do that we here? And I'm not blaming the governments who are giving these things to Jamaica, you know. Because I'm thinking that the government of Jamaica have not even and then the dialogue haven't spoke to those persons and put these ideas and say, what you know? Let us set up a wind farm. Let us set up solar farms. We still want the generators for help certain people in the immediate. But by four to five to six months. I have seen a man them build roads in six months. Roads. So you can't them say you can't set up windmills. And Jamaica have examples of those windmills in places like St. Elizabeth and Manchester. And we don't say windmill blow down. 
I have not seen anything that the windmill has blown down. See, so I'm saying, use the opportunity to do the infrastructure properly. So we are talking about housing design, we are talking about energy design, we are talking about the water. So for example, most of the coast were destroyed. And you don't have water. But a place like Cayman don't have no fresh water. Where do you think Cayman have? Desalination plants. Are you saying to us then that all those people do technology wouldn't be willing to say, okay, let us contribute at least 14 desalination plants across Jamaica so people can actually use access to fresh water, but we can actually use seawater and convert to fresh water so people can use for bathing purposes. You know, and I think in, 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 in Cayman, they probably use it for drinking purposes as well. So those things can be done. So again, I'm saying it's not a doom and gloom situation. Seeing it have to do with mindset. And the technology exists globally. And we all talk about technology transfer. And so negotiating with people who love Jamaica and want to give to Jamaica to get those things that can have a bigger impact and a more sustainable impact, I think is more a, a, a long-term feasible strategy than this begging, begging mentality with them guy and the government tend to have. You know, like the bellyful mentality. As against putting yourself in a position where you can actually flee clothes and shelter yourself. And I'm using that in a very generic word. Where, you know, you can do those things to yourself in a sustainable way.